Uh, all right, so this is lecture 12, basic neural networks. Uh, so module four, we did not get time to go over a concrete example for back probe. So uh, this video uh, reused part of the, uh, this concrete example from last year's recording for, to help students understand back probe a little better. Let's get started. So uh, we'll, uh, see the local, uh, localness of the properties of back probe. What we mean forward is, yeah, so how to get y, fx, that's forward. Okay, and then backward, actually I already had it there. What do I mean backward here? Backward means I got a gradient from the layer all after me. This is because, so what do I mean gradient? Everything is about that error function, right? Stochastic gradient descent. Everything is about that final loss function versus the parameter. So everything here is that loss function versus the, the layer after me, and I got this gradient, and then I'm propagating to backward. So uh, what do I mean I'm backward propagating is the gradient that I get from the layer after me times the gradient from my current layer. So what is the gradient of my current layer? The gradient of my current layer is y over x. That's my local gradient. What I'm propagating backward to my the layer before me is, again, is the loss function for the x equivalent to the log function versus y times the y versus the x. So who has question about this formulation? This is the most basic chain rule of calculus, right? While you have a function can be decomposed into the everything about y and y about x. And it's really just, um, so this is because E is um, F, I mean, if I write as F, um, yes, um, E is some kind of function um, F, maybe um, Y, and then equivalent to F and G, X. Actually, no, that's not good. Let me write here is GY. Yes, yeah, this is this is good. So I assuming I'm just summarizing everything after Y into a G function. Everything after this is a G function, GY, and then give me the error, the loss. And then E equals to GY because Y equals to FX, right? And E equals to G and F. So that's the reason why if I'm calculating gradient of E versus the X, it's equivalent to what? It's equivalent to, I'm calculating E versus um, G in this case actually is the Y and then Y over the X. Okay, so I hope this is clear, very, very clear um, because of this composition of functions. Okay, so and then you propagate this to the previous layers and this is you get from the layer after me. So uh, let's use an example. So assuming this is my sigmoid layer, sigmoid neuron, what I get is everything from the output of that sigmoid function. I can treat it as z, uh, as, yeah, as, um, let, let me treat it as a y. So it's equivalent to I'm just treating the function there, but it's the same as treating that output. And 
in the forward, I'm forwarding the output sx, which in this case is a sigma x. In the backward, I'm backwarding e versus the this output y. At the same time, times this output y versus the x, which is the sigma times one times uh, one minus sigma, which is equivalent to So I think Jack did a, de a very detailed derivation of this, right? Um, very detailed, how do you calculate, maybe, for example, error versus maybe uh, W4, uh, W5. So let me uh, use an example to just, just to check. Is it easy to derive uh, maybe W5? What is because when I'm trying to update in W5, what do I need? When I'm doing W5 updates, the specific W5, what do I need? W5 at T equivalent to W5 at T minors, uh, iteration minus alpha, the error versus W5. Maybe it's uh, dark delta or maybe lambda. Yeah, maybe lambda is it's easier to distinguish. Lambda is my learning rate. So which means to update W5, I only need error versus W5, right? Okay, so how to calculate error versus W5 in this case? So you don't even need to understand anything. Um, let me just do the simplest. Forget about everything um, about back propagation. Let's just do the simplest calculation. E versus the W5, um, I should do E versus the Y prediction, right? First, because that's my first output. And then from the y output prediction versus the, uh, this is really easy. <laughs> yes, uh, w5. Okay, so what is it? E versus the y hat is what? What is its gradient looks like? Two? Two? Y minus Y hat. Minus two. Uh, minus two. Minus, yes, there's a minus before. And then Y hat versus W5 is what? Actually, I don't need to because it's H1, right? Let's see. Um, y hat is here, right? This is the equation of Y hat. Y hat. The whole y hat is taking gradient versus the w5 is what? h1. Okay, so this is so easy, right? I mean, but it's actually already represent what? So this is that specific output versus my w5, and then this is what? This is what propagated from the loss layer to me. I only care about summation, and then the loss layer to me is this phi e, phi y, and then times myself. Um, and because I stop at that um, summation function. Okay, so now let's look at a more complicated case. E versus W1. So how do I calculate this? Sorry, that is a little complicated. So how do I calculate E versus the W1? 
because I need the double one if I want to do the double one update t equals double one t minus one um, minus the lambda t e uh, gradient versus the e versus the double one. Right, so that's the only thing I need to do the stochastic gradient descent. And then how do I calculate this? E versus the W1. So I have to do, um, because this is like F4, F3, F2, F1, right? And the double one is related to the F1, if we look at this. And I have to go straight backward to the F1, and then versus the double one. And it's equivalent to F4 over F3, F3 over F2, F2 over F1, then F1 over W, right? This has nothing related to the backward uh, propagation at all. It's really just functional chain rule. So let's see what is the last term, F1 over W1. Uh, I hope you can read, I'm sorry, it's pretty small. It's X1, right? Yes. And then what is X, F2 over F1? So this is actually pretty complicated, right? I mean, let's actually just look at the block view we had. So each one of them here is a block. And for every block, what I care about is input. It's in, it's out. In X, out Y, and also its gradient versus its in, out versus in, for every block. So let's just see what is it. So for the first module, uh, let's just use E example. Its input X is, in this case, actually is X1, X2, right? and also W1 onto W4. Uh, its output module is what? It's Z1, D2. And its input output, you can do the calculation, depends on what you care. So for example, the um, Z1 over um, W1 is X1. You can do all those kinds of formulation in the second module F2, its in is Z1, Z2. Its output is H1, H2. Sorry, I have it already. So um, to save time, so for every module, you write out its in, write out its out. And then you can calculate its every combination of its out versus its in. And then let's see this calculation. So E versus W1, in the end, you can write it as the minus two Y minus Y hat, W5, H1 minus times one minus H1 and X1. And this is exactly, so this is F1, F4, the F4s in versus out. Um, is this this one? So this is the the first modules, F4 modules gradient. So the first term is F4 modules local gradient. The second term is F F3 modules local gradient. And this is F2 modules local gradient. And the last one is itself, related to itself. You can see the error versus the W equivalent to what? Equivalent to error modules gradient. The, yeah, 
is equivalent to the error modules gradient, this first um, summation modules gradient, and then that sigmoid function gradient, and then the last gradient is the summation related to it. It's exactly, so this calculation, this calculation is exactly uh, F4, uh, F4 to F2 to F, uh, F4 to F3 to F2 to F1, which is about this. So let's see the error back propagate from the error module, then back propagate to the F3 module, give you H, then back propagate to the F2 module, give you Z, and then at the last layer, it gives you the local gradient that's necessary for the F1. Um, yeah, it's really this calculation. You can see every E is propagate from error to the one before, the one before, until right to the module related to me. So this is, in fact, um, the whole back propagation is really just Qing, but it's just more... Um, it's just a good terminology of the chain rule, considering the layer-wise structure. And also because of the block structure, um, it's kind of isolated. To calculate the parameter, the parameter related to, for example, to calculate the parameter related to this layer, I do not need to do anything related to layer after me, uh, before me. If that's the input, this is the output. What I only need is all the layers more close to me to the error layer. And that's about it. There's nothing more. Um, 